Well, I'm Tom Staunton, I'm a neurologist. And a neurologist is a person who diagnoses diseases of the brain and the nervous system. So I'm not a brain surgeon. People say, are oh, you a brain surgeon? No, I diagnose the disease. If your brain is not working, you're not thinking properly, or your body's not functioning properly due to a neurological or an electrical nerve problem, it's my job to diagnose it. So for example, if I think somebody has a brain tumor, I will prove it with an X-ray, and then I will send them to a neurosurgeon who removes the tumor. But my bit is the fun, mine's the chase. I'm not interested in the kill or what happens to the beast afterwards. <laughs> Although I might treat them. So um, I use drawing uh, because if I'm teaching or explaining to young doctors the process of how I think about a patient, how I analyse a patient, I, I do it as a narrative. Just I'm giving you a narrative now. And I would use that narrative and use drawings to do diagrams of the brain, of the nervous system, to take out the point that I'm trying to show to the young student. Um, I don't like didactic diagrams or didactic lectures. As I say, I like to explain the process. The patient might come in with this, and because of this, it leads to this. And here's a picture of the brain. This is the part of the nervous system I'm talking about. And they're sort of diagrammatic representations. They're not actually pictures of nerve. They're not anatomic diagrams, but they're sort of working diagrams that the students will pick up what I'm talking about. So. I won't use a PowerPoint if I can. If I give a lecture, I give lots of seminars and lectures, I'll use a flip chart. And I want pens, I want black and a red and a green. And as I'm talking, I'll be drawing the image of, of uh, what I'm talking about. But if I were to talk about students and telling them how we describe the central nervous system or the brain from the peripheral nervous system, they're two totally different parts of the nervous system. They're different in development, they're different in disease processes. So I would say, well, here's, here's the brain and the spinal cord. And there's the cerebellum. And separate from that is the spinal cord. And this is all the CNS, the central nervous system. And it's got one certain pattern of disorders. That's the spastic diseases. That's the brain tumors. That's the multiple sclerosis. They're spastic people who uh, have various different manifestations of brain dysfunction. And that's quite different from the peripheral nervous system which is derived from the motor cell that gives rise to motor neuron disease that goes from the spinal cord, goes down the nerve and stimulates the muscle fibres. And that's the peripheral nervous system. And its sensory component that feels peripheral end organs in the skin and the cell body of that is outside the spinal cord in the dorsal root ganglion. And that communicates with the central nervous system where the ideas might be derived. Or I might, for example, be trying to tell the students about epilepsy and different types of epilepsy. So if we just draw a fellow and his brain, there are two types of epilepsy. There's the focal epilepsy that comes from one region of the brain. And the epileptic short circuit in that part of the brain will then spread around the brain through certain pathways. And if it's the top part of the brain where the leg is represented and the toes, or it might be the knee, or it might be the hand, or it might be the lips, or the nose. And this is the, what's known as the homunculus. That's where the foot is represented. That's where the hand is represented. And so if an epileptic focus starts in the top, the foot area, the person will have jerking of the foot. And if the epileptic discharge goes to the hand, it will go from the foot to the hand. And so I'm drawing the diagram so they can have representation of the brain of what actually happens in the patient themselves. And that's a focal epilepsy. If there's a focus in the brain, it could be a brain tumour, it could be a stroke, it could be an abscess, it could be a bullet, it could be where somebody hits you on the head with a hammer. If there's damage there, you'll get a focal epilepsy. If it's in the face part, you'll get twitching in the face. And the patient will go off like this, and it'll move down to the leg area, and then the leg will go. But that's one type of epilepsy. That's a focal epilepsy, which is different from the generalised epilepsy. Totally different type of epilepsy altogether. And this is where the centre of the brain, the thalamus in the brain, where the epileptic discharge is suddenly coordinated from the central part of the brain and the whole brain fires off at once, right? 
there's a coordinating centre in the thalamus and the discharge in the grey matter suddenly fires off and that patient won't have a focal epilepsy. They'll have a generalised epilepsy where suddenly they'll be talking to you and the next minute they'll go and they'll fall to the ground having a major convulsion. So as I'm talking to the student, I'll be drawing the picture and representing what's going on. The central nervous system, the peripheral nervous system, are actually very, very complicated structures. And if you were to show a diagram from, you know, a textbook of anatomy, the patient's going to be baffled, or the student would be baffled as looking at the images, and the intricacy and the fine, you know, details of the brain. They get lost in it. So these are cartoons that try and simplify the whole thing. This is the Mickey Mouse of, of neurology. But actually that gets the idea across. They can look up the fine anatomy later if they want. They can look up the disease processes. But to sort of have the simple narrative, it's called uh, neurology made easy. It's an easy way of teaching. And the diagrammatic representations are very, very handy for that.